Ever wonder how some channels blow up with like one, two, or three videos? and other channels with hundreds of videos are still just barely getting noticed. That's a big thing on YouTube, and the reality is there's a lot to it, but today I'm gonna address one of the biggest issues. I'm gonna help you come up with a fantastic channel idea, whether you're starting a brand new channel or you just need to give your channel a little bit of a direction shift to be able to make it one of those big successes. When it comes to picking a great channel top, you know I'm really not feeling the vibe in here today. Let's go somewhere else, come on. It's a new place. All right, that feels better today. And where were we? When picking a topic. When you're picking a topic, like the actual what it's about for your YouTube channel, it's important to pick something that's a good fit for you. There are thousands, maybe even millions of potential topics that you could pick that could do incredibly well on YouTube or could completely bomb. The reality is, is the topic only has a little bit to do with that. So in picking a topic, there are just a few criteria that I want you to keep in mind. The first is, where do you have an above average amount of knowledge or experience? Is there a topic that you know more than most people? Notice I didn't say you have to be a world-class expert. I said, where do you have above average? Even Mark Rober isn't the most experienced mechanical engineer on the planet. He's way too young to be. And yet, he knows enough that he's able to teach us really, really cool stuff and make really engaging videos about it just because he has way more knowledge and experience than most of us. The second consideration is where do you have above average access? Do you know someone? Do you have a connection somewhere? Uh, maybe a family member that works at a certain company or maybe you work at a certain company that gives you access to things most people don't get to see. Maybe you just live in an amazing location for outdoors content. Next is, where do you have an above average amount of resources? Maybe you just have a lot of money, so you can spend a lot of money on stuff. And so, kind of the sky's the limit. And next, where do you have an above average amount of interest? If you're more interested in most people than a particular topic, you're more likely to be persistent and enjoy making the video content through the period of time where maybe you're not getting a whole lot of views. Most channels don't have really rapid success in the very beginning, and persistence is a big part of this game. So if you have a lot of interest in the topic, that's gonna help you a lot to be able to one, work through that period, but also to be able to show real passion for the topic and do things that are more interesting for other people to watch than what most other people would create. Next, when picking a topic, there's one other really important factor. Notice I'm kind of rushing through the topic part. That's because it's like maybe 5% of having a really good channel concept. We're gonna get to the really good stuff here in just a second. So the last piece is we're gonna to go to YouTube and we're gonna do some searches and some perusing, some browsing to find out if there are other channels on this topic that are successful. Successful is kind of a subjective number. A lot of people are gonna look and say, are there channels with over a million subscribers? Others are gonna look and say, are there channels that get over 100,000 views on most of their videos? And in a lot of topics, you're gonna to find that there are, but in some, you're gonna find that there aren't. And if there isn't an existing channel that's successful in your particular topic, chances are it's gonna be a really hard one for a new person on YouTube to really pioneer. So it's better to pick a topic that already has some traction on YouTube. But now we need to go into the actual channel concept and that's the more important part here. That's because a channel isn't just about a topic. Let's talk a little bit about hiking channels. When I started perusing hiking to find out, are there a lot of channels that are successful, or even a few really successful channels about hiking on YouTube? I found that there are several channels with at least hundreds of thousands of subscribers that are basically exclusively about hiking to some degree. And yet these channels, most of them were really different from one another. In fact, I'll highlight several of them as we talk about their channel concept in this video. Well, what we need to do is pair a really good topic that has success with concepts that have success. And these 10 channel concepts have all been proven over and over and over again on YouTube. So now you're going to have a recipe, a formula, for essentially an unlimited number of channel ideas. Let's dive into the first concept. The first one is the talking head or teaching concept. This one should be familiar to you if you watch channels like this one because it's basically what we do. This is where the emphasis of the channel is on teaching a principle. Most of YouTube isn't this, 
but there are several people doing this and doing it very successfully. Talking head channels, depending on the topic, don't often get as many views and as many subscribers as other channels that are more entertaining or more really connection heavy. Yet, talking head channels oftentimes are very successful when it comes to monetization because the people that you're listening to tend to be people that you come to trust as a good resource for information. And so when they tell you, this is a good product, this is a great software, this is my best sleeping bag, this is my favorite shoes to wear when I'm hiking, and they're doing it in that very teaching heavy format, you tend to trust them. And you buy what they tell you to buy, they get an affiliate commission, or they sell you their own product because you've come to view them as an authority. Now for teaching channels, so it's not just like talking head, but teaching focused channels, there's a full spectrum from the people who are more showing rather than telling to the people that are mostly telling and not showing a whole lot. We tend to wanna be somewhere in the middle where we can show things, we can give examples of what's working on YouTube or we can show through our own case studies, principles and teach them to you. People who just talk and just give bullet points, those people are usually viewed as less authoritative and the videos are less interesting because case studies are kind of like stories and people love stories. All right, the next channel concept is the testing channel. Now, we've all seen product testing, right? Where you're using the product as it's intended to be used and maybe even comparing different products and saying, hey, this one was the best. We've also seen channels that take it almost to a full entertainment side of things and it's like torture testing. We're gonna take this and we're gonna use it to the extreme and see how long it lasts. And those are kind of fun too. But testing isn't just about taking products and testing them. There's also people who will do testing of things you've seen in pop culture. I've seen very successful channels that will take something from a movie, like an action sequence and say, can this actually be done by humans? And then like athletes, people who train for this kind of stuff, try it and see if it's even feasible to do the kind of stuff we're seeing actors do on camera. That's a testing channel. The reality is, is you can apply testing to basically any topic you can think of on YouTube. And testing is just a really cool way to build authority, but it only works really if the thing that you're talking about, the topic you've chosen, is something that you can do pretty well. You could also do that with really anything else, like Mythbusters, right? Take any principle or any concept, and let's see if we can put that to the test. That is a testing channel. You can basically do it with any topic you can think of on YouTube. The next channel concept is the reaction channel concept. This is a lot like testing, except the biggest difference is the person doing the reacting, <laughs> this person is relying more on their own experience, whether it's life experience or professional experience, or maybe they are an expert at something, and they're relying on that to give a reaction to something that they're watching. Reaction channels work best if the topic and the, the things that you're reacting to are very visually interesting, and they're particularly effective when the things you're reacting to are things that the intended audience is already familiar with. So a lot of things that people react to will be things like scenes from movies and TV shows, but taking that a step further, uh, content created by other YouTubers or TikTokers, mostly because it's an easy way to pick up on things that are already viral trends. So take a video that's already gone viral and do a reaction to a part of it, and suddenly you're part of that trend. So if you're gonna react, make sure you're reacting to things that are well known by the people in the audience that you're trying to attract. The next channel concept is storytelling. Now storytelling is a principle that we should all be trying to use in our videos, but I'll be completely honest, in a talking head video like this one, it's hard to make it into a story unless I tell you, well, I tried all of these and I went from one channel concept to another and it's, it's just not really like a progression and so, if you have ideas for how to implement more storytelling in a talking head video, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. It's hard to do, but storytelling is really good. Anyway, I digress. We're back to the channel concept though of storytelling. There are some channels that are doing an amazing job of actually just telling stories. Mysteries do incredibly well because they're the kind of story where you don't just need to know the end, although you can't leave and until you get to the end. You have to know what happened before you can leave. But we also need to know how it got there. And so mystery storytelling does incredibly well. True crime is an example of this, but going back to the idea of hiking as a channel, yeah, you can have a channel where you talk about hiking and how to do it successfully. That would be a teaching channel. But this guy, Kyle hates hiking. That's his channel, Kyle hates hiking. A lot of the videos on his channel are literally like mystery videos about 
hiking, people that have disappeared, weird things that have happened, and they have done incredibly well. In pretty much any topic, you can find interesting stories. Sometimes they take a lot of work to dig up, but you can tell true stories from history. Imagine a channel about retracing history where you're literally physically in the location where something happened and you're going through that story. That'd be pretty cool. It's kind of a little bit of a spin on a travel channel, especially like a travel history channel. I would totally watch a channel where like you're showing me the cool stuff that happened and this is where it happened. It'd be amazing. I would definitely watch it. If you have that channel, let me know in the comments below. I will subscribe today. And moving on to the next one, ASMR. Believe it or not, you can do ASMR with basically anything. You could do it in an office or literally turning papers over and the sound of a fan that's oscillating back and forth is giving you that ASMR feel. An example that I found in hiking space is this channel here, where literally they went on a hike and the only audio is the sound of nature. You're hearing the wind blowing, you're hearing the crunch of each of the footsteps and they're just walking slowly. Hear this for just like five seconds. Okay, that may or may not be your thing, but anyway, I think it's a cool concept and clearly it's working because they're getting lots of views. The next one is drone work and cinematography. And I'll put those together because a lot of people will make really cinematic looking videos and put them on YouTube. And drone videography is usually a part of it because let's just be honest, drone video is awesome. We all wish we could just fly, right? And being, watching video from a drone is kind of like, almost like being able to fly. I love drone videography and it's fun to do. I'm no pro at it, but if it is something that you're really into, videography, there are some amazing channels. This one, this is Harmon Hoek and he has amassed over 10.8 million views, 10.8 million views on 23 videos. Now it's taken two years to get those 23 videos because each one has taken a lot of work. But this goes to show that you don't have to follow the model of publishing weekly on a channel to be successful. This person is doing exactly what they love to do, making awesome cinematic videos of hiking content and publishing them as they can. And it's doing really well. I love it. If that's something you're into, think about something you love to do. What's a topic that you have access to? This is someone who clearly is able to travel and go to these different places once a month or so. What is something you can do that you have access to that you could make cinematic video out of and treat it very different from what most other YouTube channels are? See how even within the hiking space, there are so many different channels that you could create? I just think like the options are endless. And knowing that hiking works and that all of these other concepts work it's just proof that you can create something totally unique on YouTube, but have proof of concept before you do it, knowing that this works. The next channel concept is challenges. Challenges do incredibly well, and some challenges can be incredibly silly. We often think about fitness challenges and stuff, but like this video like just came out and has hundreds of thousands of views, and literally she walked backwards for a day. That's what she did, she walked backwards. That was the challenge. Now, she had to some, have somebody like follow her around throughout the day filming while she did it, but that was the challenge. Silly things that you could do. Now, part of the video that was interesting is like where she lives, some of the things she has access to and stuff probably make her an interesting person to watch. But the reality is, is pick a topic, pick something that you have going for you and see what kind of challenges you could make out of it. Challenges do incredibly well because challenges usually make for a good story. They're intriguing to people. Think about Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast's channel is built mostly around challenges. And he's like the king of challenges on YouTube. And how many other channels exist out there that are basically ripoffs of Mr. Beast? Challenges are intriguing. They make for a good story. The next is news and events. This is kind of like Talking Head and it actually pairs well with Talking Head. In whatever topic or industry that you're into, that you like, maybe you just have a lot of interest in it, but don't have like anything else really big going for you, you can research the heck out of it. You can set up some uh, Google notifications so that when there is news on a particular topic or any new content that mentions certain keywords, Google alerts you. You know you can do Google alerts, right? 
Like create Google alerts for your topic and then be the source of news. Make very quick videos. For this, I would encourage you to have some sort of a setup, whatever fits your topic. If you were in kind of an outdoor space, something like this would work incredibly well. If you're in something really techy, then having kind of a techy looking office, home office setup would look really well. Look at Matt Wolf. This guy is in the AI space and he makes news content, not just news content. So we'll come back to that in just a second. But he does make news content and keeps us up to date on what's going on with AI. So I've alluded to this at least twice now, but here's your bonus tip. Your channel can have more than one of these concepts. Just make sure that you're able to have consistency from video to video. Talking head and news pair really well because the video styles are really similar. If we were to go from ASMR to news, that might be kind of weird. Just make sure it makes sense. Consistency on your channel. Consistency where the people who liked one video are likely to like the other videos on your channel is one of the best things you can do to help the algorithm understand who your audience should be and actually pull your videos to them so they actually see them and subscribe to your channel. The next concept is commentary. Now, you could be a political pundit if you want to, but that's not what I'm talking about here. You could take this and put a spin on it and do basically any topic you want, and you can have a lot of fun with it. Yes, we have political commentary people who make it more entertaining and more fun and who have huge audiences, but you can also do commentary on basically anything. You can even do commentary on regular things about normal life that are kind of weird. That's called comedy. <laughs> Satire is an amazing form of commentary that you could do on a channel if that's something that you're good at or interested in. Just take any topic, whatever topic you have interest in, and find ways to be able to give interesting commentary on events that are happening or on things that all of us are familiar with in our everyday lives. I love this guy. This guy makes these videos and I first saw him on Facebook where literally he's giving commentary on words in the English language and how the pronunciation is completely messed up. I love his videos. It's comedy, but it's comedy based on sort of a commentary of something that we all find to be pretty absurd. And our next video concept is edutainment. I'm talking specifically about Mark Rober here, who as many of you probably know, is my favorite YouTuber. He's the guy who literally when he publishes a new video, we watch it as a family. Yesterday at dinner, my son literally asked, has Mark Rubber published a new video yet? The idea here though is that you take a principle that you could teach, but that most people aren't necessarily directly looking for to learn. Honestly, that would be maybe an interesting way to do this channel, but maybe we're just not as entertaining. And so we just go the direct teaching route, but I don't reach as many people because most people aren't directly looking for how to be successful on YouTube or how to create a YouTube channel. And so I only reach the people actively looking for that kind of stuff. Mark reaches all sorts of people and secretly teaches them physics and engineering, and it's brilliant. So you take a principle that you wanna teach and then you design some kind of really cool case study or experiment around it. So then you have a really cool way to show that principle instead of just teaching it. And along the way, you actually do get to teach it. Mark does a brilliant job of doing that teaching along the way and not just showing the experiment. Two important keys if you're gonna try to do edutainment with any entertainment is to put a lot of the emphasis on the entertainment aspect of it. It was incredibly entertaining to watch those squirrels do those mazes. And the commentary that was done throughout those videos made those shots even more hilarious to watch but we also got to learn some really cool stuff along the way. The second thing that drives those videos home is to have some kind of a story arc. Mark gives you the reasons why he became interested in this topic and what he built and why he built it the way he did, and you get to experience that process all along the way, and then you get the fulfillment in the end. There's a full story arc that takes place, and if you wanna do edutainment, make sure that every single video has a really good story arc. Now let's jump back to the beginning. When I was talking about topics that you have more than average interest in or above average knowledge of, things that you may have access to, what came to your mind? Those things that came to your mind, write them down. And then I want you to pair those up with some of these concepts and see what is most exciting to you. That is gonna be your recipe for a great YouTube channel. But success on YouTube requires more than just a really good channel concept. And that is why we have been practicing like crazy how to get better on camera. In fact, four of us 
Four of us just spent 30 days going through on-camera daily challenges to try to improve our skills on camera and be able to take what we learned there and share it with you. I want you to check out that video. It will be right here next week. And until then, here's another awesome video on our channel that I think you're gonna like.